Welcome back, everybody, to another Super Coach episode. Our apologies about not getting one out to you guys either Sunday or Monday. A bit of a review from round one. Both myself and Jesse were very, very busy uh, this weekend. I was away for a work trip and stuff. We just couldn't find the time. So our apologies. Now you guys are loving the Super Coach content. So we were failed you a little bit, but we do apologize. The other thing is, and I just want to start by saying, what the fuck was that? Shocker. There was a bit of also just Jesse. Look, I, I I was down about it. I've got to say, peeling back the curtains, Jesse was a shell of a man. And Jesse, I'll bring you <laughs> in on this one. But I was lit, have yeah. you actually recovered yet? No. You know what? You got to keep looking forward, man. It was a fucking shocker. You know what? If it didn't happen to everyone, um, and I was left behind by about you know eighty thousand places, I'd be fucking gutted. Um. I've almost contemplated making a second team and starting from round two just to see if I can claw it back. Um, but no, look, I'm happy with it still. I look at my team, I'm still happy with it, but it was just a shit show for everyone. So, um, yeah, if you if you scored well, props to you. I guess it was a fucking dog shit of a round. Um, I suppose we just got to keep looking forward. It's trying to try to sit on your hands for a week if you can, but I know a lot of people can't, front row carnage and all. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm spruiking this one on you, so I'll go first to give you some time to get your information. But my score last week, 871, which gave me a ranking of 49,134. Not a great start. Um, the good thing is in our little battle at the moment and uh, in one of our competitions, we actually versed each other round one. It was insane to see, but I am... Ahead of Jesse, I'll give you that now. We'll get into his score, but I'm only ahead, I think, by about 50 or so. So there's nothing in it early on. Yeah. Very, very tight, as expected, because we did have similar-ish teams. Uh, as obviously doing the pods nut together, we get a bit of a similar idea of things. Do you have your your numbers there? Yep. Um, I scored 814. <laughs> Not nice. Uh, ranked 81,938. So. Jeez. It's a long way down there. I can't oh, find you. Mate, it's a shocking run. Oh, <gasps> How much does it suck early? It sucks, yeah. It's hard. But you know what? It's round one. Like, if it's going to happen, I suppose it's round one. You know, you can still make it better. And realistically, from 81,000 to 30,000, I'm sure, pretty sure there's only about 80 points in it. So, you know, not the worst thing in the world. A couple of good captains and you've clawed your way back. That's That's the way I look at it. Look, the way I see it, if you scored anything over a 900 this week, huge credit to you. Like absolute killer of a round to, to start our super coach experience with. We'll get into it, but it just looks like pretty much all the guns that we thought were guns will lose cash early, uh, which if you go back and listen to some of our um, podcasts and we did it ourselves, it infuriates us because it's predicted this, but their guns, you, you basically keep with them. We will get to this talking point. So it's not panic stations as much as you said, Jesse. Like everyone's in the same sort of boat at the moment. It's sort of you get to the point you just laugh about it. It, it does. It hurts, but you laugh. So yeah. um, getting into the team list as such, we're going to do things a bit different now, guys. We're going to be a bit more just talking points and stuff and, and talk about some of the big um bits of information coming out of Supercoach World each and every week. We'll start the episode by running across any key changes that we think are right to mention uh, for each lineup. So first of all, I'll take the Broncos versus the South Sydney Rabbitohs. The Broncos are pretty much 1-17 to 17, as expected, which means Brendan P. Cura is playing. Um, huge from a, a Supercoach point of view, coming off his four points, which hurt a lot, especially when I was named yep. him and started him. Um, that was a killer. but. It is what it is. Everyone basically, a lot of people, I don't want to say everyone, but a lot of people had him, so yeah. they're all in the same boat there. We're just hoping he comes good, which I have no doubt he will over time. Um, I will be holding him at this stage if, unless someone of those mid-rangers in the next week or two come out and kill it. It looks like a huge price rise is coming. We'll talk about that when it comes and, and then perhaps planning around Brendan P. Cura. I think it's probably an interesting talking point, but... um. Actually, wait, I've gone a bit early here because normally, we, first of all, we'll talk about our teams and what we're actually thinking about <laughs> this week. And let's get into that first. I've, I've all over the shop. As you've all sure. watched before, we did our live show first and that got a bit out of hands at the end there. So we just want to come down from that because yeah. 
there was some great content. If you haven't already, do yourself a favor. If you don't normally watch our normal rugby league stuff, you've got to watch that episode, especially the last 10, 15 minutes. It was it was next level, but probably one of our best episodes we've done. And thanks to this great man next to me, Jesse. <laughs> and my thoughts Just, for yeah. this, actually, now I'll let you go, Jesse, first. What is your trades looking like for round two um, for Supercoach? I don't have any. Um, I was lucky enough to not have Tamalolo, um, Dry Arrow, Spencer Lenu. I actually ended up going with, like, I was pretty vocal. <laughs> yeah, it was, man, P- um, Palacia too, you know. I-, I did say that I didn't want to get on board with that for good reason. And backfired on a few, but I ended up running with um, Cotter at the end after episodes and episodes of me scratching my head why his ownership was so high. Um, and Totola, who is just meat and potatoes, Mr. Reliable. Mr. Not going to score me a lot of points, apparently, but at least he's still there after round one. So um, Cotter was kind of, I think at the time, I was more so tossing up who that other one was going to be. Um, I should have just locked in Terrell May like I had anticipated, but I ended up not going that with direction because I just didn't know what the Roosters were going to do. And I didn't want to be locked into a you know, player playing in that Vegas round if I could work around it. Hindsight, I'd go back and do it can't now um cotter's a good stepping stone up i was really thinking about finua blake after i saw him go over and i thought you know what i'm just going to get a gun front rower it's you know just someone who can score tries i just got to get this going my team as fast as i can so um i have tossed it up i it's tricky i don't really have anyone i want to trade out at the moment but luckily i don't have any fires to put out this week um tupanu was named again and Piakura are both in so my second row is back to what it started looking like hopefully I get more than 29 points out of the two of them uh, um if I was going to do anything I was contemplating getting lay butt in after uh, yeah, that's the one that pisses me off the most because I was so hot on him the whole time and I actually had him in my team before I decided to get two of us a check in there I ended up finding the cash and going up um but then it left me in a position where i just couldn't afford him anymore um and now i'm like fuck i I just need to get him in so good job having him too you put on 103 points against me you prick um but the only one that i've considered is tupanua out um burbo up into the second rows and to get lay butt into the center wing and it leaves me with about 30 odd k because i've got 97 in the bank at the moment um, which is heaps. I didn't expect to have 97 going into round two, but I'm glad that I do after the mess that, you know, arose from it all. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking, I don't know. I don't know whether to trade this week or if I just want to wait out a week, but the thing is like come round three, I'm probably going to be boosting and I'm probably going to want him in my team. So I'm thinking I might just do it now so that I can have my three trades later on and not have to use one of them for him. Um, because it still leaves me with him and Lukey, um, Bo Fermore, who I'm not trading out this week off the buy. Um, Morgan Smithies, um, Piakura, and I've got Joe Chan as well. So just needed to cash out. Um, I had Jamin Salmon in there right before the kickoff for the Melbourne game. And I ended up swapping him out after Fanil Blake went ballistic because I just wanted to get an extra 100k just in case I needed to make my way up to Fanil Blake. Um, regretfully, I didn't put Liam Henry in when I had that extra funds there because I was stuck before I did that. So now I'm stuck with uh, Viliami Fafita in my front row. I completely blanked on it. I just forgot to make that swap when I had the extra cash there. So now I have a dead front rower. So it's a bit shit because I was watching the game too. I was ready for it. And I just didn't even think. So at the moment, um, my only possible trade will potentially be Tupanua to Laybot via Jules. Otherwise, I won't do anything this week. What about yourself? I, I I remember my first year playing Super Coach. It does get a, a lot, so I can forgive you for a couple of these little mistakes you're making. Um, That's all right. So it's yeah. all good. From an uh, inch at a time point of view, uh, proud coach here. Um, we did give Laybutt our three in our three two one uh, votes at the end of the weekend. So he was a clear standout. Can't believe uh, you didn't jump on. I don't know what you were thinking there, but I was on yeah. him quite. Just quite early on, and I was glad to keep him. I was disappointed I didn't stick with my man who I did have early on in stages with Val Holmes, but you can't win them all. I will take the the lay victory and, and run away with that one. Um, 
I'm in the same boat as you and I thought it pretty much straight away. I don't want to get myself I'll, – I'll be making no trades this week. Well, that's the original plan. I was lucky enough to escape all the fires as well this week that all the injuries have um, – made some of my draft teams weren't lucky enough i think i'd arrow in one or two of them so i had to get rid of him and um a couple other things but for a classic point of view i have been all sweet uh happy to keep uh my players and a few of my players who i weren't wasn't originally thinking of playing um i'm I actually thinking about like someone like denny levi for some reason just all of a sudden i feel like playing him this week against the west tigers um two weeks ago someone said that to me i thought i would have I looked at him just so you're crazy, but he scored decently on the weekend. I think he will be quite high up attacking wise against the Tigers again this weekend. I don't, I'm not big on the Tigers, so there is temptation there. While um, Bo Fermore is out with the buy, I need, need to make that last reserve work. So that is a possibility. I'll go all out and just put my put my big balls on the line. It can't go any worse than last week. So. But I'm the same as you. I, I'm sort of just – I am 99% sure I will boost next week. I will definitely have that as one of my boosting rounds, and I'm happy with it. I'm happy to just work out three of those um, players, and I'll be strictly working off a, trying to increase my cash uh, as best as I possibly can next week and just making sure I get off probably my three guys that will drop the most amount of cash and get on th- the three guys that look like they'll be gaining the most amount of cash, and that's purely – what I'll be looking at next week uh, from my team. And, yeah, it's the the big dogs like the Clearies and that we will get into. Um, obviously, it wasn't ideal on the weekend, but everyone was in the same boat. But, yeah, for, for an inch at a time, at the moment, we're sticking with loyalty. Um, after that piss-poor effort on the weekend, some might say, what a stupid thing to do, hold them accountable. But I've spoken <laughs> to a fair few players. They're on notice. This week, it is do or die. So we're playing finals footy this weekend, and let's see who sinks and who swims. Um, back it. into the team list. I did the Broncos already, so Brennan B. Cure is a huge watch, obviously, this week, uh, tomorrow night. The, for the Bunnies, there is a few changes. Um, well, obviously, Talos Duncan comes into the starting side. Now, we're hearing rumours there will be a late switch with Cameron Murray, who will go to the edge, and Del- Talos Duncan will play in the middle. If I still had Talos Duncan, which I ended up selling because he didn't start last uh, two weeks ago um, for Vegas, I would be loving that even more. I know he'll get through a heap of base, and that would be a huge um, discussion point. He is one that I will be watching next week. I know he won't get the price rise next week, but if he comes out this week and kills it in base and Jairo looks like he's out for a, a longer period of time, then he's probably one of the guys I'm, I'm first making a, a trade for to get into my team. So that's a big one. Um, for the rest of the team, pretty much I've heard rumors that uh, Jacob Gagai won't be making the side um, come yeah. uh, tomorrow night, but – I hope that's not the case. I don't know what JD is thinking now because I actually thought he was pretty good um, on the wing and did a really good job and actually looked pretty dangerous with a few of his runs and looks pretty strong. So yeah, I don't know who strong. if he's gotten mixed up and Richie Kennedy Richie should Kenner. be <laughs> getting rid yeah. of. But anyway, yeah. um, shocker. Just on there, um, but... just on Duncan too. Um, obviously, there's a lot of eyes on him to see how he goes this week. And, like, to be fair, his name's second row. I, I don't think he's looking at his, like, reserve stats and stuff. I don't think he's actually played a game in the second row, um, mainly through that lock or off the bench. But, um, you know, good, decent base, 50-odd average, 53 average in his reserves in about 50 or 60 minutes. So it's not too bad, but the only thing that's concerning me is host. Um, looks like he's either injured or whatever it is. He's not even in the team. So... Good thing is you do get an extra week after the price rises to see what happens with him. Um, if you can lock that down, Arrow looks like he's going to be a long-term out. Definitely, I'd be looking at him for sure. But he's not going to be one that I'm rushing in like next week to get in. Um, I just want to kind of see what happens when Host is back, if Arrow's out for the season. or I just saw you know reports today that he's just trying to manage him. Seems like he's going to not... Um, you know They're pretty confident even if he has surgery, he's going to be back this season. So... Um, it might be a long while away, but obviously there's a short-term play with Duncan. I just I just don't want to get him in and then have Host all of a sudden get that spot, and then you're thinking, shit, you've got this other guy you've just moved cash around for. Um, so I think it's it's an easy one to just watch and see for another two, three weeks and see how it goes because his price is good. Um, it might be worth, you know, fingers crossed, one of these cashes we've got 
um, makes a bit of coin in the next, you know, a couple of weeks and you can just cash down and bank a hundred K and then get Duncan in if he's on the way up. It's probably going to be the plan that I do with it. But until then, I think I'm just watching. Um, there is other second rowers that have just appeared out of nowhere that I would be a bit more interested in than Duncan, to be fair. But, you know, this week was good for team lists. I wish it came out last week. <laughs> Something like this. A bit of an influx of cashies would have been handy, considering the dirt we had to really? make through with. But, you know, what do you do? It would have been. Uh, we will get back to Latrell. We do have a segment coming up where we will talk about some of the, the big dogs from the, the round one and stuff. So we will go back to talking about some of those big guys. So don't think we've skipped some of these big players already. We haven't. We will be coming back to them. Uh, Jesse, you want to take the Sharkies versus the Bulldogs? Yep. Uh, so the Sharks uh, looks pretty standard. Toby Rudolph's made the way in um, at the expense of Royce the Choice. You know, anyone that jumped on him for round one is going to have to make a decision or a choice themselves whether to keep him or not. Um, minutes might be an issue. Uh, McInnes stays at lock. Uh, the rest of the team looks as it did last week. So they'll be looking to do what they did last week and claw back a win, but I don't think it's going to be too hard at home against the Dogs. Um, for the Dogs, still running with Taff at fullback. Um, Karaz in there in the centre still. Uh, they brought Connor Tracy onto the wing. I would assume naturally that maybe they swap and Karaz goes back to the wing and Tracy plays at centre. Um, for my draft surely. team, I sure hope that's the fact. But yeah, surely <laughs> you think, surely. Um, never know, man. Tracy's a good player, he can play anywhere you put him. Um, but obviously, he played a lot in the centers and did quite well. And Kraz played a lot on the wing and did really well. So, I'm not too sure what the, the thought process is there, but easy to do a swap. Um, the rest of the team, as it was last week, too. Salmon's still at lock. Uh, he's still got Josh Curran off the bench, still reckon he's going to play. Decent minutes through the middle too. Um, would be really nice to get him in a dual position. Uh, I've been seeing that get tossed around quite a lot actually. And I'm thinking, holy shit, you know what? Josh Curran, 420, if he had dual position, that is the answer to a lot of the questions we've been asking for this um, <laughs> front row situation. So might be a few weeks away for that. But um, yeah, look, the dog's going to have to do something Something pretty big uh, to get themselves back after last week. I didn't think it was a very, very good display. Um, and, yeah, the Sharks just showed a bit of grit. So I think they kind of walked through them. Um, good play, I would say, if you're considering captaining Hines. There's a lot of um, vice-captain loop options getting thrown about at the moment. Um, I'm in two minds to just throw the full C on him and not worry about it, to be honest with you. I reckon they uh, I reckon he bounces back big time. I'm thinking just running straight captain. I am on the straight captaincy bus as well for Nico Hines, all in on him. Uh, I had the straight C on Ponga last week, and I thought at the start that was horrible choice, but it ended up being half Worked decent. Well. Um, yeah. ended up all right. But, yeah, I, I don't think Hines will do what he did again. Um, that was a hard game against the Warriors uh, last yeah. week. and. It was round one, and it was obviously a shit show that we have discussed. Just quickly, I, I did think Sam Hughes, for the hype that he got, was a little bit disappointing Yes, uh, last week. He just didn't seem to yeah, get the sort of points that we thought. But like, he's cheap, uh, a big cheapie, so we're not too worried. Like, personally, I'll, I'll hold him in the team at the moment. There's no concern at all to, to get him out. But I definitely would have anticipated a bit more points coming his way, especially being a forward and being that base sort of player. Mm. I know Parramatta bash the shit out of him, but it just would have been nice for him to step up a bit and, and get that increased minute roll. Yeah, like he played 27 minutes, man. Uh, 1.1 points per minute. He ended on 31. He got a big boost actually in the rescores because I think he was sitting at about 17 before that rescore mm -hmm. come through. And it was a pretty you know generous one for him. So I'm not super worried about his points per minute. You know, he does get his work out there. He just needs more time. Um, yeah. But it was a very strange game in rotation for forwards. Obviously, we saw... Um, Anyone who got on Farmer Sully, he didn't really do anything at all. He didn't get the minutes or the points for it. So um, Kurt Mann got some time out there. Um, Karen has big time as well. So, yeah, I think we might see that a lot. But the forward rotation, especially with um, Salmon in there too, it just seems at the moment a little bit unusual. 
Uh, I think they just try and work out the best combination. They might take a few weeks to to sort that out, but I still think within a few weeks we might even see Hughes get a run um, to start with. Fingers crossed, that'd be nice. Uh, but yeah, it's it's one of those positions at the moment where I'm like, I wouldn't be confident playing him as my front row number two. Definitely not. Um, I try and refrain from putting the the reserve on him if I can avoid it. Luckily, I haven't had to yeah, in two I weeks, haven't. but. Um, I know there were some teams that were running him as their starter too. So um, to be fair, 31, it's not bad considering some of the scores that come out there. There was a lot of low 30s, mid 30s. Um, if you had Tamalolo, you know, you'd be wishing you started Hughes. So in a way. Hey, we're getting there. We are we are getting to that. So, yeah. um, so I Todd, think, yeah. Todd like, Payton loves back. Oh, fucking hell. You know, he's just giving us some more fuel for the fire, man. <laughs> <laughs> Killer, but they were flying, so you can't knock them. Um, but yeah, I think you know it's his first game of first grade footy. I think too. So, um, Hughes, that's just the thing. I, I feel like what you yeah. said is right there. I, I reckon that just with the talk that was hyped up about him in in club, um, I have no doubt what the plan will be is the first few weeks just get him, I give him a taste of first grade and just slowly increase some minutes for him and develop him, develop him into that starting role by. I'd say round 10 at the latest, I would anticipate to see him with that number eight or number 10 jersey on his back and and doing the starting stints and coming back on and doing a, a 40, 45-minute stint in the end. So I'll be holding him for sure. I'll definitely be holding him for the long run as well at the moment just yep. to see what happens and, and go for me. He's going to sit there. He's, he's the last choice um, prop for me and, and no real concern at all, um, especially, as you said, 31 for what, what happened last week is definitely a pass mark for, for a 200-odd K uh, player, the yep. Penrith Panthers versus the Parramatta Eels over at Bluebet Stadium. So the Panthers welcome back Mitch Kenny and Scotty Sorensen. I know he was one of your big favourites um, in the preseason, Scotty Sorensen. Mm-hmm. Very, very su- um, surprising when it comes to a super coach point of view. Can can get those points quite consistently, which is great. Is a bit on a pricey sort of mark, but if you do have him in your team or you had to have him on the bench last week for, and you stuck with him, then you got him for this game. I loved Isaiah Yo last week. He went through just what he normally does, and I've got him in draft, so I loved having him and, and watching what he did. It was fantastic. I just can't pay out for him at the moment. No, it just doesn't work for my team, but who knows? Over the next few weeks, get some cash generation that happening. He might be a guy that I might start to look into, but then by the time that happens, it's Origin, and I'll go, you know, I'll just wait till after Origin's done. So we will see what happens there with Isaiah Yo. but that was about it for... Penrith. You did mention Liam Henry, who came on and had a decent stint. Um, there was a, there was some some points there. I don't know off the top of my head what points he ended up with, but I think he did get more than Hughes. Thirty five. Of... Yeah, I think he yeah. ended on thirty five. Yeah. I can go in and double check that. But yeah, it was a it was a good show, man. All base. Um, you know, and now that they're back to a full strength side too, the fact that he still has his position, he obviously is going to keep it. Uh, thirty six he ended on. So yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty decent. Uh, I, I, I guess it, we, we may talk about Tally May again in one of the segments, so we don't really have to touch on him now, but he was fucking sensational. Phenomenal, man. Absolute weapon. Yeah, he passed the eye test with flying colours. Eh? He could have had so much more too if that um, Sonny Luke try wasn't disallowed. Um, yeah, what a beast, man. He's rapid. I, think I can't believe how fast he is. I forgot just, about the speed he had. He just, oh, he's dude. <laughs> This away. Just out of nothing, too. Thinking like he just come off an ACL, man. And he just fucking puts the jets on. Like I was loving it. It'd be nice if you know if he was a bit of a pod, but obviously he's the most probably if you don't own him, you have to. I think he, he's just absolute far and beyond a must have more than more than most, to be honest, in any position. Um yep. I don't know why he's not the highest owned player in the game, to be fair. Especially after yeah. that. The price tag, points you'll get out of him, value, um, everything oh. put into one. I think he's right up there. And uh, right yeah. now, I'll be holding him for, for the whole season. That's my mind frame with him. And yeah. um, I just I hope no he intentions stays, at all. stays fit. So yeah. there's not a thought in my mind about getting rid of him at all at any single point in this season. Because I actually think Penrose just keep getting better and better throughout the year and build up, which will help him with his points as well as he gets used to center. Because this is a, a new position for him also. Mm. The Eels. Um, no changes at all. Cardi Party will be back. We will talk about him in another segment. So I'm not going to get too far into the Cardi Party yet and, and get the party streamers popping yet. We will hold off uh, at the moment. But uh, just keep an eye on Wiri McGreg, who is on the extended bench. He may come into things. And 
maybe a starting role, junior back to the bench, etc. So uh, just keep an eye on that. Uh, Greg, I think he's okay priced if he does become a starter there at Parramatta. But just depend on minutes. There's so many middle forwards now there at Parramatta. It's just a, it's almost like a roosters in a way where they've got so many quality sort of options there that they'll all eat into each each other's minutes. And you just got to sit there and wait over the next two or three weeks to see what actually happens and get a, some sort of balance um, balancing act sorted out and then decide what to do. I, I would not be jumping on anything there at the moment unless you can find the cash to go maybe to Cardi and mm. ride that way. But, again, I'd probably wait another one more week to, just to see Cardi and see if that was a, a one-off game or if that's his, his no. form. Um, I, honestly, I can't see being a one-off, man. I He's one of those guys that I picked up last season at the beginning of the year, you know, round one because of his price tag, thinking starting second row and held it the whole season. And he was, he was phenomenal, man. And it doesn't look like he's slowing. Um, I think he's just found this new wave of form and I'm fucking looking at him going, man, I want to go to this party. Eh? <laughs> like, I want to, where's my invite? Please send me an invite. Come on. I want to be there. So yeah, no, he, like he's not cheap, but like if you can do what he does for 630, could be a bargain. Lusick was an interesting one. He obviously was the, the starting hooker. He actually scored half decently. So yeah. if he ended up sticking with Lusick, you probably would have been happy. It looks like he will get some cash generation happening there. Brendan Hands, as predicted, ended up getting a 10, 15 minute stint, which I thought he should have got a bit more. There were some times there where I think um, Lusick was looking a little bit tight. I would have liked to have, as a Parramatta fan, seen Brendan Hands inject himself a bit earlier, about that 25 minutes to go mark, and really run those forwards around um, in the middle of the park who were tired. But can't diss. Um, Lassie kicked that 40 20 as well and, and did get some good points from a super coach point of view. Jesse, yeah. uh, the Raiders versus the West Tigers. Yeah. So Raiders versus Tigers. Um, so there's been a bit of a smidge of a shuffle for the Raiders. Obviously, Sebastian Chris is back in the centers. Um, Nick Kotrick makes way. Alba Hapawadi to the wing. Rapana keeps the fullback. So, you know, all the talks about Chris or Savage or Sevi Stewart at fullback, uh, it's Rapana Rama. Back at it again, so can't knock it, man. Worst you, you case quite for well. super coach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, probably the most expensive one out of the work. So, no, nah, he's he's good, man. Um, they seem to do quite well when he plays fullback for him. So, um, Ethan Strange retains the five eight to the blessing of us all. We don't lose another one. Um, in the forwards, uh, Papali, Levi Tarpany, standard stuff. Uh, Hudson Young, Zach Hosking. What a pair of second row forwards. Uh, Hoskin killed it. Yeah, very impressive debut for him. Uh, and Morgan Smith, he's fucking th- talk about impressive debuts, man. I love this oh. guy. I love him. Honestly, I'm I'm so keen for this dude to just keep rolling with it. <laughs> I was just watching him, and he come back, and he was on the sidelines when he come off his HR, and he's lurking. He was just prowling around. I was thinking, fuck yes, this is what I've been asking. This is what I've been waiting for. We talk about um, he's the new great. hop good. He's the new hop good. Oh, you know what? It's early days, and he hadn't had the same sort of attacking output. But if he can just keep doing that, it's enough for me. I think. I don't think he's going to have the ceiling of a hot good, but um, man, sixty odd points in base out of the same amount of minutes. His first game for three hundred and forty-five. Fucking, I'll fill my team up with them if I could find them all. Stunning. I'd have them all, man. Yeah, what a specimen. So, yeah, no, nah, fingers crossed he keeps that when um. Big Reds back in town. So, yeah. Morgan Smithies. I'm I'm in the fan club. I'm the chairman. <laughs> um, On the bench, Starling, Gula, Mariotta, Solo. So, yeah, pretty much the same as last time. But they did, yeah, they've obviously kicked Kotrick out. And fair enough. <laughs> Should have been a long time ago. Um, But we see the Tigers come through. So this is the first time we see oh. it this, uh, this year. So... Um, I'll go through the whole team because we don't have a reference to go back on. Uh, Dream Baller at fullback. Um, the Forbes Ferrari on the wing. Charlie Staines, Star for Toa on the inside. Solomona for Tarpe in the centres. Um, debut for him. And Junior Trap. outside him. Yeah, I'm I'm not about that for Tarpe play. I've seen it getting tossed around. I think it's just a matter of time before Olam comes in and that's his spot. And that's the end of him. So... Um, yeah, it's not one that and I want to humor stuck. too much. Yeah, you, you're stuck big time. Almost There's as stuck as anyone who got Jacob wingers. Gagai. Thanks. Yeah, if you know, we'll you, JD. He's my Wolfie. new Todd Payton at the moment. Oh, really? 
That's fair enough. If this happens, if I see him tomorrow night, he doesn't run out. Um, or, um, there'll be a status put out. I'm telling you now. Thanks yeah. for stuffing me over. <laughs> that was the only reason I didn't get on because I just didn't think he could hold it. Um, Lockie Galvin in the six, Jaden Sullivan, number seven. So, um, yeah, I'm keen to see Galvin run out. I started with him. I, I chucked him in there as just a sort of like enough in a way, just a cheap cash in my, in a five, eight spot. I was never going to play anyone and yeah, his name straight away. So I'm, I'm stoked about that. Um, Utoi Kamanu, David Clemmer as prop, Api Korosau uh, in the nine, Papali Bateman and Alex Seifarth at lock. So I think it's the team people are expecting, obviously, barring Galvin getting a run out and maybe, uh, depending on how far away Justin Olam is, I haven't actually really heard too much about his injury, if it is one. Um, no. One thing I will say, is. the ugliest goal kicker, in the competition might actually be getting a run happy now with Caesar on the bench. So yeah, um, I'm not too sure if Lockie Galvin does kick out. I, honestly, I can't give you guys an answer on that one. So I don't know if he's in the mix as well, mm. but um, for now, the guy with the worst goal kicking style I think I've ever seen in my life oh. uh, will be first choice goal kicker for the West Tigers. Have you, um, have you paid much note to Chad Townsend style? I don't it's, pay much attention to Chad Townsend. I wouldn't either. <laughs> but he has this very strange, like, he, like, kind of leans over into it and he, like, swings his arms a little bit and he just has this like sort of... golf. He, he prowls on the ball, like, he sort of lurks up to it. It's it's weird. Um, yeah. He like can a creep a at bit. 4 o'clock in a nightclub getting, yes, getting onto the... Exactly. The, yeah, the prey is the last couple that haven't much. left yet so it's final call the lights are about to turn on and he's just making his final approach <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah you got caesar in the 14 so i would have a you know inkling to say that he probably spells coruscant um yeah. and just obviously kicks when coruscant doesn't so um finua pole alex 12 um samuel afinu too he was one that had a lot of raps about him in the preseasons as well so keen to see what he can do um but more alex safarth i think i, I think that's one of those sort of second row cashies that kind of went a little bit under the radar um he was training preseason at lock pretty much the whole time too so um if he can hold a spot out you know he's quite cheap i think he's 320 odd top of my head um could be decent but definitely worth a watch and Happy that they had that round one buy, so you can get yourself an extra week out of it. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's the Raiders and the Tigers. What I would have probably called a very lackluster, you know, uninspiring fixture. I'm actually quite excited to see how it pans out. Yep, um, I don't have really literally anything to add to what you. I think you've covered it perfectly. So I'll just move on to the next game and talk about our favourite coach, Todd Payton. Um, this is a big one. Look, before I start anything, Jason Tamalolo played 21 minutes, I think it was, on the weekend, and I don't know what was going on. There's reports that they've said they just want to ease him into the season. It's round fucking one. It's round one. What do you one. mean ease him into things? It's round fucking one. What are you resting him for? On Is that whole preseason $1 million dollars a year, what are you resting him for? Like... Granted, like people come out and go, they won the game, they smashed the Dolphins. Like, it was the Dolphins who were putrid. Like, honestly, granted, yep. You know what? But why would you rest players like Cotter, Lurkey, and stuff, players that I reckon are more valuable at the moment to this team? I would, this would have been a game I actually would have pushed Tamalolo to play a bit more minutes and just see what he's got, see if he still yeah. has that old Tamalolo in him and go, you know what, mate? Go give me one of your 60 minute stints. Let's just see what you got. The, yeah. we're, we're going all over the Dolphins at the moment. Go get some confidence. Run over a few people, get me some tackle bus, and off we go. Yeah, I 100 percent agree with you. Honestly, um, I feel like I can go on a rant again about it, but you know, 21 minutes resting him, trying to manage him. He's got three years left on his fucking contract. <laughs> Rest him in a year, two years. I, I don't understand. It's round one. Like, okay, you've walked over the fins. You're walking them. You're making them look like schoolboys. Okay. Cool, you know, good job. Your team's coming out and they're fucking red hot. You, it's Tamalolo, man. Um, twenty-one minutes, like, oh, we got to manage him. We got a short turnaround. I think the whole team has the same turnaround as he does. You know, he's not forty years old. He's still a wrecking ball. You're still paying him a million dollars a year. 
surely the board's got to think, fucking Peyton, mate. We're paying this guy a million yeah. bucks. His dollar, his hourly rate at the moment for 20 minutes for the paycheck he would have gotten that week, he should be on, Peyton should be on the block. <laughs> uh, I just can't work it out. And you know what? Maybe because it was such a fucking absolute cakewalk for him, maybe he gets 60 minutes against the Knights this week. If I see another 35 I'm actually... minutes out, I'm going to just draw a line through Tamalolo forever now, I think. I've actually Peyton heard, won. got some news today, got some inside information. Payton's already planning for in three years' time when that round one kicks off. They're actually only going to play Tamalolo for a five-minute stint just to ease him into that year. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, but they're already they're already planning on it, planning it next year. It'll be down to a 15-minute stint. The year after, a 10-minute stint. They're just going to ease him into the year. They don't want to push him. We'll see how they, how they go. And... Who knows? Mm. We might get him to a 30 minutes in by the end of this year. We, we just don't want to push Tamalolo too much. We don't yeah, want to. No, you've got to be careful. Um, he's very fragile. <laughs> uh, he's, he's the biggest human being I've ever seen, but he's fragile. Mm. Um, the greatest super coach Shanna pairing of all time is back Valentine Holmes and Zach Labart. Absolutely phenomenal. Wish I did, went against my own thought about not going double gun in, in club footy and just stayed with Holmes, but what can you do? You can't win them all, and I didn't win many last weekend. So uh, that would one, have been a one. victory I would have loved to have. Um, the rest of this, Hillam Lukey is back in the team. He did pass his HIA, so no um, worries or concerns for this weekend. Pretty much everything else is 1-17 to 17 for the Cowboys. Um, I thought Dearden, just quickly on him, did show some patches. I know there was mm. a try there that helped him get some points up, but yep. we did always say if you didn't want to go all the way up to Dill Brown, that he was our next best option there. Um, ahead of the likes of obviously now Munster, who's injured, and, and Walker, we would have probably went to Tom Dearden. And yep. pardon me, wishing I, I did that. But again, mm. you can't win them all. And I did not win. Probably I won one on the weekend. I won Labour. So I'll, I'll take well, that as, as, my, yeah, as my win. Um, and yeah, like obviously Labor, you know, he's three hundred K less than Holmes and scored pretty much the same points. So yeah, massive. Um, again, it's one of those sort of instances too where I'm thinking like it was such a dominant display against such a bad, bad dolphin side that I can almost not consider the scores they did as consistent enough. You know what I mean? Like it's one one game, you can't call it consistent anyway. There's nothing else to work off. Um, but you know what, if you can do it again this week against the Knights, um, I'll be, I might, yeah, I'll, I'll be near about guaranteeing it. I'm always half considering doing it this week, um, but I, I'm sort of in two minds. Nah, just I just kind of want to see. Yeah, I kind of just want to see what happens, but um, it's going to happen regardless because I, I should have started with him. He was, I was just so hot on him all preseason anyway. So um, I can just, just bite wait. the bullet, do the inevitable, or just wait a week and see what happens. But again, it's a nah. three-round rolling average. Um, if he has a shit game against the the knights and then has a follow-up shit game or average enough that hundred's going to disappear pretty quick and he might not even really change in price so it's not going to be panic stations to try and get him in before he's six seven hundred k instantly but i don't really want to be paying more than i have to um same as scott Drinkwater. obviously i started with him i want to see some big things because it's been my fullback chat about him now yeah we may as well is Honestly, um, what happened? You you did trade him in. I, I remember that. Yeah, you, you I got, got him, him in. in. Yeah, disappointing considering that was one that was like ideal circumstances for Scotty Drinkwater to do his regular hundred ton up. Um, yeah. see you later to next week. Set and forget your captain and and off you go. But every time I thought, yep, because I was stressing because I knew with our battle, I knew he was crucial to to things and. He could have literally just dragged you off the canvas and, and scraped you home. And I was watching that bite my fingernails every chance he was around the ball going, here we go. It's happening. It's happening. And it just wouldn't happen. So such a weird game for Scott Drinkwater because it wasn't like he wasn't busy. He was busy. He just wasn't finding the ball. Yeah. It just didn't seem to go his way when it needed to for the points. Yeah. Um, he did enough. He did enough for the game. Obviously, they dominated. Um, but it just wasn't him on the end of it, unfortunately. So I'm not worried. Um, I'm probably I'm still going to stick with him, obviously. 
Um, half the reason I did go drink water at the end of the round was because I wanted to have, when I was so unsettled about which other fullback I was going to run, I kind of just wanted to put all my money into that position, to be honest. I just thought, I've got all this coin now. Um, it should have been turbo, realistically, but I didn't know what team lists were going to do, so I didn't want to get stuck with no money left and being like, I need to fix this shit, and I've already got locked in, you know, all this coin on the side. Um, so I didn't go with him, and I went with Scotty just so I can go down to turbo if I wanted to. Um, it's still on the cards. It's still in the back of my mind that there's an option there to do that. Um, depending on how it goes after this, you know, right before the price change, if it doesn't look nice and, you know, because turbo looks fucking good, um, that could be a potential just straight swap for me. I'm not I'm not afraid to do it. Um, Scotty will probably pick up later in the season like he did last year, so I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, but yeah, look, I'm, I'm holding strong with him, man. He's he's a proven gun from last year. Anyway, um, the team looked really good. It's not like they're a bad side and he didn't do shit. Like they, they dominated. He just didn't really get involved too much on that side. So they will, the, the points will come. If you've got him, I think it's probably just worth holding. It's not, it's not an urgency to get him out by any means at all. It's a, such a luxury to trade him for no reason. Um, I yeah. I also think, as you said, the Dolphins factor they were they were so poor. I don't think they'll verse a team that poor again for at least some time. And I think the Knights love a bounce back factor here. And and just looking at their team a bit, Tommy Jenkins um, was spoken about early in the preseason for an option. He has got that spot now. Tawala's out uh, with injury. Uh, I think his was a, a hamstring, if I'm correct. I've just misplaced where I've got the notes about his injury, yep. but I think it was yeah, yeah, a hemi, was, hemi sure strain. Sure, it's all Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Dan Goga looked decent for the Knights once again. He looked busy. I looked like yeah. one of the only players actually for the Knights that night that wanted to actually be there and play some football. Uh, so he he was quite promising. Marju um, just got through his sort of base, but there was no real attacking upside, so you obviously anticipating that to increase the, the attack side of things. So if you're a Marju owner, I'd definitely say at least watch this week and, and just hang on because that's obviously going to come. They're not going to not score tries, the Newcastle Knights, with the lineup that they've got. It's just it's bound to happen eventually. Yeah. The halves have, have stuck. Um, I don't think that's the way to go. But anyway, the Adam O'Brien does. So credit to him. He knows obviously a lot more than us super coaches know. <laughs> but True. But yeah, yeah, anyway, running Cogger, yeah. it just it seemed to disjoint the attack so much. It seemed like Ponga wasn't getting any ball, and they just had like fucking six halves out there. Because you still got Crossland out there too. Um, yeah. You've got Cogger to come on. You've got Crossland out there. You've got Gamble and Hastings, and then somehow you meant to try and get Ponga the ball. And it was against I, a team that their forwards were dominating. So I don't get it. I don't yeah. get why you're getting bashed in the middle, and you go, you know what? This is a great idea. If I bring Cogger on. Leave Crossland out there as well, and I'll just run an extra half. It'll be, it'll be all good, guys. We'll just continue to cover these massive forwards that are coming at us. All good. It's... They had four halves, <laughs> and they had no hole. What a shame. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. We'll see what happens. But the big, the big inclusion, I think, I piss ball. Huge. Fuck, he's a big boy, man. Huge. He is. You know what? He's huge. Both their second rowers are I'm looking at. I'm actually looking at Tyson Frizzell. And I don't know when I'll get onto him or if I will, but I have huge temptation for him because I actually think he looks really, really good on Thursday. He actually looked like he wants a huge season. He wants to look and be back in that origin fold. He wants to make sure he's got one of those jerseys this year and his effort plays were massive on the on Thursday for a team that the effort plays were basically non-existent. He was one of those players that his kick. I said on my, on the Sunday show his kick chases were phenomenal. He would actually run, time his run. He'd leave 10, 10 meters um, before the kick out, sprint up, time it so he was just getting to the kicker as he kicked it. Just those little things. He was already hitting top pace while he was chasing and stuff. I really liked what I seen from Frizzell. Obviously, there was a try there to increase his points, but. To be honest, I think he will be a try scoring back rower this year. I think he, those holes he hits close to the line are going to be really hard for yep. defenders to to tackle. He's just one of those balls of muscle that just seem impossible yeah. to to tackle close to the line. He um yeah he had a blinder too, like in a in a pretty you know average side. But um you know if he just decided to take one step out of the way, 
and not get into any leave. Was it Levi? I think it was Levi uh, interfered and yeah. got that. Yeah. There goes yeah. Ponga's points, you know what I mean? We wouldn't be talking about Ponga's 50 and being disappointed. He would have ended on a good score. So, yeah, he didn't put much, uh, didn't put many feet wrong that game, except that one. It costs probably 30 plus points for Ponga. Um, but yeah, he's 580K, man. Uh, I think it's a fair price, to be fair. I don't think it's too bad at all for the quality of play you get out of him. Um, ideally, he doesn't play Origin and you can kind of run him through it, but. That'd be good. That would be good. Yeah, not a, not bad. But yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's too old, Madge. Don't don't pick him. He's too old. Nah, wink, you, know, wink. you don't need that experience. I think you probably do. <laughs> Blues do. Um, <laughs> yeah. But piss poor, man. Oh. We'll have to just Everyone's see how that KP. Runs. I want to talk about yeah, KPP. KPP. <laughs> KPP. How good's that? Uh, <laughs> look, I know they love Dylan Lucas up there, and for good reason. He's a good bloke, and he's a great footy player. Um, I think this is probably the one thing that, he didn't want to happen because there's a good chance that without obviously getting a broken nose and a concussion, it's very hard to keep Pierce Paul out of that side, but I feel like it's going to be very hard to get him out of it um, yeah. now that he's got that position. So we'll just have to see. Um, but obviously, you know, he's Dylan Lucas is well liked there. So I, I don't know if it's going to spell a, you know, a minute rotation for him, but um, he did play last week, so you do have till next week to make the decision about him. Um, I'm pretty keen to do it, to be honest with you. Um, get Kai Pierce Paul in because he is a unit of a man. And on that left side, too. He had his moments. Oh, dude. It's just going to be how hard is it going to be to tackle anyone on their left edge? Got Mazu. That offload got play with Ponga, it looks dangerous. Yeah, you got it looks just... like what I want to be on for Supercoach. 100%. It seems like he's just going to have the best super coach game possible. So, yeah, I'm very, very keen uh, on Kai Pierce Paul. Just have to see what happens in the long term. But I think it's still even easier to run. If you've got someone like Jamin Salmon, too, you know, you're not far away from him already. And I just think even with whatever minutes he gets, he's going to have so much more upside um, at that price. So, yeah, definitely on the radar. Definitely. Well, that's sort of let everyone in a bit of my my thoughts of what I'm thinking of doing uh, for next week's boost uh, trades that I'll do. He's definitely in my thoughts as well and one of the guys I really do want to get on. And my thought behind it is perhaps getting off the P. Cura train for now just while he makes up um, and gets back into the price. Because if just depending on how P. Cura goes tomorrow night, like, I do not wish to disappoint him at all, but if there is another HIA or something, you do see players get him in clumps when they do unfortunately get one. If there's quickly mm-hmm. another price, uh, a low, low score there for PQ and it doesn't look great for him, maybe free up a little bit of cash, go down to a KPP, um, ride him for a bit while he's looking good, and then see what, what's happening and reassess other players to maybe get PQ back. But um PQ is my big headache at the moment, especially in that back row position. I just don't know what to do with him because I feel like as soon as I get off, he'll get 100. <laughs> yeah, he'll get his, uh, his two-try game. I don't think he's much of a headache, really, to be honest with you, man. Um, his break-even after this week is 79. So see how he goes against the South. You know, if he comes out with a 50-60, he's not going to lose much. And he comes back against the Panthers too. So it's not an easy game. Um, but realistically, like, say he has a couple of average games. Very average, you know, low 30s. Um, you're only going to be looking at about like a 40k price drop, which even still, even after he's dropped in price, he's still going to be as much as Pierce Paul is at the moment. So, um, and that's providing he has two shockers in a row again. So, um, he's one that I'm more than happy to hold on to. You know, I made, I sort of spoke about it last week. I didn't really know what the deal was there, but you can't get off a guy that just because he got knocked out. You know, it's a bit unfair. Didn't really give him much of a chance. Mate, and he's this already is super so cheap. We are not fair. Yeah, true. We're pretty ruthless. We cut. You know, we swing the axe instantly. I don't, I don't care if you got knocked out in four minutes. Um, you scored. Like <laughs> you're out. You, you gave you're me a out. four. You're out. Yeah. No. No. no and then I'll get you back once you're up. doing well. <laughs> yeah. Once I got to pay up for you. So, yeah. no, I, I'm gonna run with him for a while, man. Um, like, he's a. He's a good player. Like, nothing's changed in two weeks. Oh, yeah. No, he's a gun. It's just, um, obviously, you don't want to I'm see just a thinking four because you start if, thinking, get out of here. If KPP's starting and he looks good this weekend, I just want to be on that. And the way I, I 
I'm trying to just quickly remember my team. And from what I've, mm. I can actually, I'll quickly, I've got it up right at the moment. Anyway. I've got Wong, Lane, P. Cura, Furmore, Smithies, and then Chan. So he's like, for mine, him and probably Furmore are the two that I'm looking at possibly getting out. Because I do, if Pierce Paul goes off again this week, I want, I like, I feel like he's almost a must for next week. You just simply have to go yeah. on him. And if you don't get on him next week with his style of game, you can quickly miss out. On, on some really quick cash to get generated. And that's what I'm solely basing my team mm. off next week. Definitely. So it's probably out of Pia Cura or Fermal, um, because I do I think Wong is the, the set and forget for mine at the moment in that Roosters pack who I think will just keep churning out. I think 46 might be one of his lowest scores of the year and he scored that in round one. So I'm happy to stick with Wong. Lane, I think, will improve. He'll just get his confidence back with his body and stuff. So he'll just be on the improve. So for mine, Firma and Pia Cura are my options to, to make way, which also will then free up 100 or so K straight away by getting KPP in. And then we think about the advantages of, of cash to the increase for KPP, the decrease from um, perhaps Firma or Pia Cura, depending on this week. But again, there's a lot to happen, go through. Maybe one of the others will get an injury this week. You never know. But you can't make too many plans in Supercoach, as we know. But just a thinking out loud sort of comment that's maybe where I'm mm. going at with things, but we've seen last week a week's a long time in Supercoach. I know a lot of people out there with front row, they're both their front row starting options are out now this week. So they've got to go and make some yeah. trades, which aren't ideal. But um yeah, front row forwards, we are getting into that. So I won't say too yeah. much of that now. But the Melbourne Storm and the Warriors, um Jess, can you let me know the the Melbourne Storm I heard have been having ice baths for twenty hours a day at the moment after that defensive mammoth effort just to get right for this one. Oh, mate, they deserve it too. Um, what a showing, you know, keeping Penrith to nothing. Just insane. So, yeah, no, they did really well, man. Um, as far as their team lists go, obviously Pappy's there. Always good to see. Um, Remus Meany's on the centres. Uh, Jonah Pezzett in the six. So Cameron Munster came out and said that he has an injury and he has no idea what to do about it. And Bellamy also said the same thing. And I was just like, what does that mean? You know, you don't want to be hearing the player come out and saying, yeah, well, I slipped and aggravated an injury that we have no idea how to fix. And now he's not even named. So, yeah, it's it's a little bit worrying, to be honest. It, um, the dumpsters will still it wasn't continue even... to burn. But... It wasn't even that he, they don't know what to do with it. It's actually as well what he said was they don't even know what it is. They don't even right. know. Like they can't pinpoint the injury itself, which is even more of a worry because you're thinking, yeah. what the hell? Like, the stuff that they have at their disposal, what the hell is going on? Because he said yeah. one way, like I think what, when was their game? Their game was Friday night. So he said he had a run the Thursday and yeah. he almost felt like he could have played. But then on Friday when he woke up and stuff, like he could hardly move. Like he goes, yeah. it was horrendous. So yeah, couldn't not get good. out of a jog. Not good. Not ideal. So yeah, um, Jonah Pezzett will do a job, obviously not to the quality of Munster, but no one can. Um, Jerome Hughes is going to be picking up some big time slack. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't know about Munster, man. I do want to see him back in there, but I reckon – Reassess after round four, after their buy, probably just give them a few weeks off. Um, Kami Kamika, King in the props, Harry Grant. You got Joe Chan back on the edge again, which is great. For those that started, I was hesitant too, and I ended up doing it, so I'm glad he's still there. Uh, Eli Katoa was really, really solid, um, still in there, and Trent Loyero. So, yeah, keeping that experiment at lock going for him. Uh, the bench, as it was last week, Wishart, Welsh, Lewis, and MacDonald. Spelt MacDonald's. Uh, for the Warriors, top pick. Oh, there. wait, 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 oh, wait. One sorry. sec with the storm. Yeah, the Sean Bloor myth um, just boggles my mind because by now he would have had enough time to be into the storm system. I anticipated he would have actually had that spot by now, at least on the bench. He still hasn't. That's not to say there can't be a, a late switch and, and he does make the side, but I. I I've always been ahead. Like when this move ended up happening and, and the SOP happened and everyone was thinking and going off about Sean Bloor like he was bloody, who, who can we liken him to? He, he was one of the star second roles of the competition. I kept mm. thinking to myself, like, we just have not seen it ever. 
he has not like he's had maybe one good game every 10 where you go oh I can see something there and his junior days he was great but his body continues to fail him he can't ever consistently get runs of of games mm-hmm. there and I never had him down as a super coach option for me like if he can get that edge spot at some point for sure but at the moment it just doesn't look like it's going to happen he's going to continue to apply his trade and make made to work for it by Bellamy it's, there's no you don't get to walk into this side. and You have to prove yourself. And I don't know if that's Sean Bloor's character. I don't know if he likes to do that. Like we all know that the, obviously the story with um, young, oh, forget his name, the guy that had it sort of the center and, and second row, we just have not seen him, but he's super coach famous. Um, Howarth. Mental blank. Jack Howarth. Yes, there we go, Jack Howarth. I feel yeah. like it could be the same sort of thing. Like he just, yeah. he's been told to prove himself. He just fails to do so. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but it's just it's a head scratcher for me because mm-hmm. in theory it was l- looking great. They needed an edge f- back rower. No one knew about Joe Chan. No disrespect to him, but no one even knew he existed at the time. <laughs> um, Trent Liero is actually killing it at lock. He's playing really well. I thought last week yeah. he's doing a really good job there. So yeah, Sean Bloor is an interesting one. If for some reason you still got him and you're holding him for some reason, thinking yeah, no, nah, he's coming in just. Do yourself a favour and get off him. And I don't ball. know if we've seen him anytime soon. Yeah, definitely not. Um, yeah, I, I think we might see him next year. Um, <laughs> who knows, man? <laughs> he, could turn, he could turn up any week. But yeah. I'm not holding my breath for that one. Um, is that all for Melbourne for you? Yeah, no. Nah, as a Harry Grant owner, I'm, I, I, right. I did the late – Upgrade, yeah. I wasn't too. I didn't really mind because it was the Penrith Panthers. It was an absolute battle. I was never anticipating a huge score from any of their real big guns. Even Pappy uh, was not in anticipating it. I'm hoping he starts to take off a bit more from this game and, and a bit more attacking stats. So yeah. Um. So for the Waz, don't know how they didn't win last week. Um. They played really well, to be fair, for most That's... of the game, but not enough. So um, Tor Picky at fullback. I was very impressed with his effort, man. Great base stats. Um, happy to play him last week in my starting side, and I'm going to do it again because he was pretty good. Um, you got Dallin and uh, Montoya on the wings, Rocco Berry, two of us, a in the centers, Luke Metcalf, Sean Johnson as normal. Um, fuck Metcalf, man. What a what oh. a display. Oh, how good was he? Does Very he come impressive. into calculations or what? Oh, he can do. Yeah, if you need to cash out, Dylan Brown for whatever reason, definitely. Um, I felt I feel like the forwards for the Warriors are always great. Adam Fenua Blake, Mitch Barnett, both solid. Fenua Blake is an absolute weapon, monster of a human. Um, yeah, I'll be rushing to get him in at some point. Wade Egan somehow named. I don't know how. I saw his elbow go backwards, so. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if that's a late scratching and you see Freddie Lussick start, but apparently he's fit enough. Is he is he the most unluckiest guy in the NRL? I just feel like every freaking yeah. week from last year and now this year, he just seems to get injured. He cannot yeah. go through a game unscathed and actually just get through a solid 80 minutes of work. He would be an absolute nightmare to own in Supercoach. Yep, I don't want to do that. I've had him plenty in draft. Um, it's, it's it's just as much of a nightmare, to be honest, because it's less <laughs> on the waivers. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I think the only other hooker that's as injury-prone would probably be Verrills. Um, they both come with their, their own caution tape. But, um, yeah, named somehow. So, Freddie Lussick there on the bench. Um, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, second row is Ford and Capewell. Felt like Ford probably didn't do himself too many favours there last week, but obviously keeps the spot. And Tohu Harris. So the team is, as you expect, uh, very good side. Looking good. Um, it'll be a tough one for them. They don't usually get up against Melbourne, but I don't think things change this week for them. Yeah. 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 I'm not that excited in a super coach point of view at the moment for the Warriors after last week, but... That's another – it's just because it's the storm again. So it's going to be a hard week for yeah. Warriors players to score big points. It's more you're looking at the base sort of workers and get through some some points. Like for me as an RTS owner, I'm hoping he just gets through like a 45, 50 um, point sort of game and just smashes the runs, gets some – maybe the odd offloading and stuff, and I'll be I'll be wrapped with him. If you can somehow jag a try, even better. 
But yeah, it's, it's just going to be one of those slugfests against the Melbourne Storm. I think that's what it's going to be um, week in, week out at the moment against that outfit. They just look right, ready to go uh, yep. this year. Manly versus the Roosters Sunday at Brookie, 4 o'clock. I cannot okay. wait for this game. A lot of people talking about Parramatta Penrith uh, being the match of the round. I actually have this one. I think this is going to be an absolute barnstormer. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the hardest round, uh, hardest game to tip for mine as well. Manly looked really good in Vegas. Tommy Turbo looked like he finally has confidence in his body, which is a scary thing. Uh, for super coaches like myself who don't own him, um, there is already thoughts in my head thinking about how the fuck do I go to next week and get him um, into my team before I get hurt too much. So we will well, see what happens there. Um, but for Manly, it's pretty much oh, Tommy Talau. He's named on the wing. So um, obviously mental blink on his freaking name. Fast bloke on the wing. Uh, sorry, uh, Saab. Jason uh, Saab, Jason is, Saab. Is, is out. Hemi uh, gone for a yep. number of weeks by the looks of it. So we got six. The, the Jess Surges, yeah. the Surges effect could be real with Tommy Slough. He's very, very cheap. He's one of those cheapies that I remember in the, in the preseason, I did not make a team that did have him in the side because I was thinking, yeah. oh, maybe he'll get that wing spot. You never know, but. You never know. Just see how long Jason Saab's out for. He might be a quick cash grab if he's in for six or seven weeks and he can jag a few tries off the turbo brilliance. Um, but see what happens uh, yeah. there. Garrick was absolutely sensational. We will get to him um, in a matter of minutes, I'm sure, about it. Brooksy as well, for, uh, great work. But a, look, that was Brooksy's probably best game he's played in a number of years. He scored a try and everything. And I think he only managed, what was it, 60-odd super coach points? Yeah, so, 59. It was a sensational game from him, but I still don't think he's a super coach option. I still don't think he's a classic option. Like if you got him for draft, I think Jesse did do fantastic. Mm-hmm. He'll get you some solid scores, and that's what you want. But from a classic point of view, I just I can't go there. I just cannot go Luke yeah. Brooks in, in my classic side, especially going off that. That was a remarkable game. And to only look there and go, oh, 59. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, the rest of the squad. Looks pretty much the same as the Vegas game. Ben Trevoy, which keeps his te- uh, his spot in the side. Apparently, Schuster is fully fit. I think he's playing reserve grade. He hasn't been named at all in the squad. So, Burbo looks like he has cemented that spot for now, which is fantastic for an owner like myself. And I he named him last back. week. Um, I will be naming him again in my starting four in my back uh, in my center wings. I think he's just there to yep. stay at the moment. Uh, for the Roosters. Two huge ins. Um, so, uh, sorry, three. Two manures obviously there, named to play. Dom Young is back. Uh, so that is great news uh, for the Roosters. And um, sorry, Jared Rhea Hargraves, obviously, with Lenu out, suspended for that eight week period, is named to start, which means Terrell Maid continues to come off the bench. But as an owner, I am not concerned one bit. Keep getting your points per minute, big fella. Uh, I got no doubt another. Do it. I loved what uh, Robinson said two weeks ago in that press uh, presser. At the end, he goes, "Look, I get him on for the second half, and I look to try and get him off, but he just keeps going. His motor's good enough, or I just leave him on the field." You know yep. what, Robinson, as the coach of injured at time, just keep doing what you're doing there. That is fantastic. Yeah. You love to hear it. <laughs> Yeah, that's like it's like the best sign ever. You're like, oh, I just couldn't take the guy off because he just kept going. You're like, fuck yes, he's in the seventeen. Take notes. Sixty minutes exactly. Fuck. So they pay the guy a million a million bucks a year. Somebody will. Terrell May's the future. Oh. Um, yeah. Same side, really, isn't it? Just with Ray Hargrave. Yeah, that's in. it. Yeah, I don't think he plays big minutes. I reckon Terrell May comes out, puts another fifty, and scores seventy points, and then. Most traded in play this week too, ready to reward everyone. I'm just thinking, do I do it or not? I don't need to. Is that May? Yeah. Yeah. He's the most traded in this week. Yeah, by a fucking mile. By a country mile. Whoa. Yeah, big time. Because a lot of people, the thing is, you've got to remember. They're fixing Lenu and and, They're fixing um, Lenu, they're fixing Arrow, they're fixing Palacia, um, Tamalolo as well. I know. Fair few got at least one of the four. 
um, and they want out. And he's the it's such a good price, man. He's right around all of them. You can even bank money going from Tamalolo or Arrow just to get him. So it's a no-brainer. Yeah, at the moment, he's been traded in by seven, almost 18,000 people. 12.3% most traded in. It's huge. Thank you. Yeah, and you started. Good. Very good. Thank you. I, I'm, that's why I'm a super coach expert here at, at League of Inches, so yeah. I'll um, just continue to take that number one mantle uh, in there. Um, second second place, uh, Cameron Dumpsters. Can you just run us through the last game so we can get into some of these talking points? The Dolphins and the Dragons. You seem to have gotten all the big teams this week. That yeah, it seems like it. Lucky, <laughs> lucky me. Um, so with the Finns, um, key ins, Jake Avarillo replaces Tessie New. Um, Isaiah Katara replaces Sean O'Sullivan. So some big changes needed to happen for that team. Uh, absolute walk over. Shocker. So. Yeah. Shock horror. Tessie New, which has done nothing at NRL level for the last three years, failed to do so again. And <laughs> Avarillo is back in the team after one week. Shock. What a shock. What a shock. <laughs> yeah. Avarillo, who signed there to play in the centers next to, to Herbie. <laughs> um, you know, what a shock. But, you know, it only took to round two. So at least he didn't ride it out for too long. <laughs> um, Marshall King, Flags, Marsh, uh, and Jesse Brom, standard. Uh, Ewan Aitken makes his way in for um, Connolly Lemuelu with a knee injury, I believe. So could be a few weeks in for him. And Max Plath uh, takes a lock spot over Ray Stone, I think, concussion, um, who took Yuck. over from Gilbert ACL. So that spot seems to be cursed. The unlucky 13, hopefully not for Max Plath. Um, so, no, I think he'll be all right, man. And the fact that he's like a 200 and... 78 odd K 280 K 5.8. No, that's, um, it's not bad. It's not bad as like an easy out, but I just want to see how long it lasts. Uh, Josh Kerr, Bromwich, Nichols and Jared Wallace back on the bench. Love to see Jared Wallace on the bench. Uh, he's, he's just a points per minute beast too. Um, uh, but Josh Kerr, very impressive actually in that first game. Um, we did speak about, about him as too. well. So yeah, very, very early days in the pod too. Um, for the, for the Dragons, um, I don't think there's any changes, to be honest with you. Not in the starting lineup. No. Uh, for Tyler Marin is on the bench. Luciano Leilu is on the bench. Um, Molo and Mahleason. Get into that again. Uh, yeah, I have to just see what happens. Whether <laughs> Tommy Eisenhuth um, swaps out for Leilu. For Tyler Marin, I killed it last week. Whether he gets a spot. Um, I wouldn't be rushing to get anyone in from this team, barring maybe Zach Lomax, if you're if you're hot and bothered on him because he fucking killed it. Um, <laughs> Star have to winger. Yeah, big time. Yeah, he's sad about it, but no one else is in the super coach land. Um, just interesting to watch how the minutes rotation pans out for the Dragons after this one, now that they're all there. Um, yeah, just, just wait and see. Give yourself a week or two. I'm not really super keen on any of them for a fantasy-relevant point, to be honest with you, man. Between Leilua... Um, potentially for Tyler Mariner for a very, very quick cash grab. Uh, but I don't think he's got much appeal now off the bench if he has it. Um, between Sewer, Eisenhuth, good. If he gets that same center spot, you know, you can plug him in the centers. But everyone looks like they're going to be losing minutes now. So I think it was a big one-week stint, and we'll just have to wait and see. But that's the Dragons. Um, I've got the Dragons to win quite comfortably after last week's show. Mm. We'll see what happens there. Put 50, put 50 on him. Um, I have nothing to add, so <laughs> I'm happy to move over to the talking points. Um, yep. Neither of those teams are doing anything for me at the moment, super coach wise. Uh, so front row forward chaos is our first one, and we sort of just mentioned it a little bit there. Um, we'll just go a bit more in detail on it. So you, as you just mentioned, like Tom Lolo, Jai Arrow, Spencer Lenu, what do you do? Uh, from a super coach point of view, if you have them, obviously Terrell May seems like the obvious choice and the choice that is the most favoured. Is there any other sneaky options like Flegler, for instance? He actually looked pretty good on the weekend. There was a lot of people came out and bagged him at the, in before this season, said that the trap vibes and stuff. I didn't buy into it. I didn't think he was a trap as such. I definitely didn't think he could have the huge upside that was getting spoken about very early on with him, but I definitely didn't think yeah. he was like a trap. I definitely thought he could have at least got through and kept his price steady. 
now I'm starting to think you can at least get a bit of a cash rise out of Flegler as well. So mm. they're the two that stick out for me. Is there anyone else that I'm forgetting? Um, for the price of the guys that they're having to replace, you know, for the price of your your Tamalolo, Dry Arrow, um, that like mid to higher sort of 400s, you know, there's not a great deal of straight swap options unless you want to do your two trades. Um, you got Jensen, played big minutes in that game too, so you have to just see whether that continues on or not. Um, to be honest with you, I think besides Terrell May, you kind of have to pay up. Um, and I would be personally, I'd be going, you know what, I'm just going to avoid the shit show. I'm going to get away from all this mid-tier rubbish, and I'm just going to jump straight to the big dogs, man. Get Fenua Blake, get Haas, get something like that, because you're just going to be shitting yourself, really, trying to get something else done. I think Terrell May, in due time, will push himself into that bracket, though. So I think, yeah, if you've got any of those fires to put out, um, particularly Lenu or Arrow, you just trade him this week. You just call it. On you go. Thank you for coming. Round one, you fucked us up, but you replace him and you, and you do it with someone very, very solid. Um, I The only reason I wouldn't get Flegler this week is because they have a buy next week. You're going to put yourself in the same position. Um and that's that's a bit of a that's a bit of a dud go, and he won't have a price rise for a week, which is very handy. Um, I had him in my team and swapped him late for Cotter because I just thought between the two, if my plan's to go for Newell Blake or someone big after this, I'd rather just get Cotter and just try and get more minutes out of him. Um, because yeah. I'm not going to last too long, and then obviously look what happened. Yeah, Flick got to try. So how long? How many times has that ever happened before? <laughs> just kicking myself. Never, everything never. I've, everything I've done didn't work. So. Um, yeah, I think great if you have him and good option to still, you know, run with. But again, that next week buy, you're just going to be putting yourself in the same position. So you can probably afford to wait a week or two. Um, if you still want Flegler and you're happy with the buy and you're happy to plug like your Sam Hughes or um, a Mariotta or Liam Henry or any one of those cheapest front row forwards that you've got, it's not a bad idea either. You know what I mean? Just, you could do much worse. Um, so, yeah. Is that I thought Josh Kerr was also really, really good as a jewel at 350, but it just depends on um, his minutes. He played 40 minutes um, and 76 points. So without his attacking stats, I think he got something like a 50-plus base. So it was still just an incredible wow. show. Yeah, very, very good from him. So um, he's another one on the watch list too. So there's been a few 350-odd guys that have popped up. Um, but yeah, I, I'd, I'd probably just be going, uh, if you can avoid a trade, don't do it, but if you have to, Terrell May's the guy. Um, it, it's pretty clear, clear and obvious after this week. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I don't really have much to add at all with that. Um, Kerr, he looked fit and actually looked like he he's in for a, a big year. So he's definitely one that I am watching. Uh, I don't know how I'll make it work or, or what will make it work, but. Definitely because of that um, dual option as well. He can easily clear up a, a quick 100K or something if one of my second rollers go down injured or or isn't working for some reason early on. I can quickly go to him and work out, and it'll be handy to have throughout um, the, the the few weeks ahead, etc. But definitely someone I will be watching, and I don't think uh, many people have, so it could be an early pod as well, Josh yeah. Kerr. But um, anything else to add on the front row forward, Chaos, or, or that, you're happy with that? Um, that's, that's kind of it for now, really. Uh, I suppose we'll just have to just assess and see what happens come next week. Um, anyone that's got any of the big dogs at top, obviously big minutes and gun status, you're probably just laughing at all the, the mid bottom dwellers trying to make their teams look good with 400k, 300k front rowers. Um, doesn't seem like it's going to happen too well. So yeah, you got your hearts, you got your Fenua Blakes, GG, because you're going to run with them forever. You're very happy. Aiden Fenua Blake, you are an absolute freak. Sorry I ever doubted you, and I am just so sorry I didn't get on you when I, when I could have. So, uh, you know like you, you um, you didn't have him in your top five front row list. Yeah, I kind of called you out for that's... it. Oh well, that, he, he's out to make take. a big one, so there you go. he'll finish year the, the the top prop now after that and then absolutely Probably. put egg on my face. It won't be the first or last time a player has put egg on my face. So I'm thinking about you, Tyrrell Sloan, who killed it on the weekend. I said <laughs> him and Lomax should have swapped. But anyway, um, a new influx of cashies uh, becoming available 
What's the job security like on these? Because there's definitely a lot of talk at the moment about some of the, uh, a lot of us have got to go and finally bottom dollar cheap is uh, the popular thing in round two. Where was this, where was this last week? Mm. Um, there is a couple straight away that point out to me is sort of the trap vibe. You do not go there. Talking about you, uh, Fatape from um, the West Tigers. Um, if that is how you pronounce his name, so apologies if it is not. But what about the rest of them? Um, so there was a few that obviously we knew about last week, you know, your Morgan Smithies, your Topikis, um, Bostock, if you want to call him a cashy, obviously he went over for a try, which helped, but he was very, very poor in his, um, base. Um, so we kind of had a sort of an idea about these guys last time, but, um, new emergences, I'd call them probably your Talis Duncan is a big one. Um, I put Talis Duncan and Kai Pierce Paul at the top of the list for, for that same rough price bracket, 321 for Talis and um, 345 for Pierce Paul, um, both of them have a bit of uh, uncertainty about their minutes too. And it's mainly just about Duncan with Host not in the team. Um, I still think, you know, if he does a good job and Arrow's out for the long term, he could be really good to get in. Um, same thing with Pierce Paul. I-, I reckon he's got probably more of a chance for it. Um, but again, Dylan Lucas is a very hard person to keep out of a side. So... Um, incredible players to cash down to if you can afford, you know, if you need to make a move down. Um, the only player in my side at the moment that I'd be contemplating doing would be probably Tupanua, and I don't really want to. Um, I still have a lot of faith that Tupanua can perform quite well, but again, if these dudes at 350 or less than that are going to do the same thing, um, you know, there's just more upside for them. So, yeah, it's a bit sideways, but I'm, I'm happy to do it early if it means making cash. So, um both, yeah, both look really good. Um, Smithies, again, obviously come out last week. Absolutely. I reckon he's just near about to must have for that position as far as it goes, if he can hold it. Yeah, he's he's a weapon. Um, the two Tigers, boys, look Obviously, Garvin Horsburgh's and, the worry there. Yeah, that's the problem. Horsburgh's the worry. But I, I still think Horsburgh goes to prop and Smithies keeps it. You know what I mean? You can't the way just he's playing. Guy, the... Yeah. It's not just that at all. It's the players, but like all week they've spoken about it and saying how crucial he is to that side already. Um, with the yeah. way he can either ball play and guard the attack or just go up and hit, hit the ball up, he's already crucial to being that middleman. So it yeah. sounds like they've done a lot of work around him and really value his qualities. Um, so yeah. it looks like he will be there for the long run. You don't revolve yourself that much around one player if he's just going to go straight to the the bench and you're going to be unsure about his minutes. Um, sh- well, in early the in the season, too. he played sixty odd minutes. It's like you can't give a guy yeah. sixty minutes in his first game and then just bench him when someone comes back. Like it just doesn't make sense. So, um, yeah, I think he's he's got to be locked in almost. Um, Lockie Galvin, very keen to see what he can do. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of pressure that people are trying to. I suppose you wouldn't say trying to put on him, but you got to think like he's an eighteen year old making his debut for the worst team in the comp in a very hard position next to a not experienced halfback. Um, he's pretty much got everything destined for him to fail, I would say. You know, they're, they're pretty much laying it up there for him to do shit. Um, obviously, Ethan Strange didn't really light the world on fire in his debut either. So, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I, I am keen to see how he runs. I do have him in my team. Um, not even expecting him to get named. I just sort of just chucked him in there. So, yeah. No. Good enough for me. Um He'll just chip away. But, yeah, for Tarpe, I don't know. Obviously, Justin Olam is just lurking in the bushes, waiting for his spot back for whatever reason he's not there. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be Why is he in the bushes? That. I don't know. Why is he not on the field? <laughs> <laughs> What's he done wrong? Uh, I think he's on a knee. I think there's a, yeah. there's a knee niggle. So. A couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah, I would still consider, at the, at the suppose, you know, there's not many center wing options out of Rose yet, but. Um, Torpiki, one from last week. If you're a little bit hesitant on him because of the whole nickel clock star thing coming back in three odd weeks, um, I still think you're going to get a half decent price rise out of him, even enough to just move him on. But I, I was impressed enough last week. He had really good base, and he's just a tiny little fella, isn't he? Darting around, yeah, he's elusive, dangerous, live wire, yeah, big time. And he got a HIA too, so. Yeah, yeah true. not too bad. Um, one I wanted to touch on was Tommy Talau. Um, He's very much like a Sean Bloor in a way that I'm like, I just haven't seen him do anything special. Um, 
obviously the left side that he's playing on for Manly is lethal. He's got Trevojevic there. Um, Saab's out for six weeks. I think Saab just takes it back when he gets back, depending on maybe Jackson Paulo sort of shits the bed and they can shuffle things and he can retain a spot if he plays well. Um, I just haven't seen anything too much from him, but he's priced off like a 28 average. So you've got to think he does better than that. Um, had a quick squeeze. He's had 31 games at uh, center in his uh, first grade career for a 40 average. So, you know, at the worst, and that was for the Tigers. So he's um, he's going to do better than that. He's going to he's definitely going to get some attacking stats regardless. Somehow they're going to drop it on a plate for him. You know, he's still bag something here and there. So um, yeah, two eighty seven speaks volumes. Like he's he's such a cheap price in that side. You can walk into the you know the Manly wing for two hundred ninety k next to Turbo, who's firing. Like you got to think that's that's got to be pretty valuable. Um, even he for a short stint. Um, he's a huge temptation for me. Uh, I just have this thing about him just because of how Turbo's come back and how Manly have looked in that Vegas game. They're going to score some tries each and every week. I have no doubt about that. Um, their run is a little bit difficult for this period that he will be there, but I still, as I said, I still think they'll be able to manage tries. And all it will take for him, I feel like, is maybe three or four tries in this period to just jack him up from that 287 quickly up to that maybe 400 mark within that yeah. sort of time frame. And I, the, the, by week three, before he jumps up in his first price rise, I will be seriously looking at him and tr- seeing if I make it work. Because if I can quickly grab out 100 plus K off him in that six-week period and then just jump straight off him, that's two trades I'm happy to make for that quick cash. Yeah. I feel like he's got more opportunity to make cash than a Bostock does. Um, both yeah. slightly dearer, so it's going to be an easy one to see. Um, even like That's I still think both stock, yeah, I still think both stock might make you some coin. And um, obviously, Talao won't have a price rise until after both stocks made his money. So, um, that's that's a move I've looked at doing as well in about probably three four weeks time, um, providing he's there ready to go. His price looks good. Um, before it changes, just bow stock down to Talao and just run it, or even Hacho down to Talao, just seeing what happens. But um, it just mean? seems, yeah, I'm not, I'm not afraid to get off him though. Um, <laughs> just depends. Still want to give him a bit of a run. He's a halfback, so the things will come in time when the team's obviously not dog shit. So if you can keep his spot in the seven, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's more so. I would say the bow stock to Talao play is going to be the most common one that I can see happening. Um, mainly just around when the price rises and stuff will happen in in turn. So um, the other one I had was Max Plath. I think I briefly touched on it too. Um, he's playing lock and he's, his position is a 5'8". So maybe he gets himself a dual second row spot. Um, nice little cash option there down the line if he can keep it running. Um, Ray Stone will probably be back in a week um, from his concussion. So I don't think it's a long-term thing at all. I think there's a good chance that he goes back to the bench and spells Marshall King for a minute. Um, but he did play 10 games at lock for the Rezies last year, averaged 63.4 in 67 minutes on average. So that's my face too. That's what I said when I was like, okay, okay. Um, every other game he was playing in the halves, averaging over 55-ish. So um, he's got the talent for it, definitely. But he's got the talent for it. The bench is a huge worry for mine. I feel like this is huge Wayne Bennett mind games. But because you look at their bench, they've got Josh Kerr, Kenny Bromwich, Mark Nichols, and Jared Wallace. It's yep. almost four props. It's almost four yep. middles on that bench. That yep. has to easily eat into max plus minutes. And I'd even go, oh, would not surprise me by kickoff at 6.15 on Sunday if he's dropped late switch, dropped back to the bench. And one of those yep. four, a, any of those four, is your starting 13 to come on and take the bash out of the game. And maybe Max Plus comes on. Does he get, then play through the last 60 or so minutes? That's the question. Because if he can do that, he can definitely produce some minutes. But as you said, like the thoughts of um, Ray Stone back as early as next week, no doubt probably getting that spot straight back in. But the thing with Ray Stone, he's one of those players who just can't get consistent footy. Yep. So if you're getting Max Plus, and he is cheap, it's one of those plays you sort of annoyingly have there because 
I reckon by the end of the, the year, he'll have one of the he'll have like 15 games next to his name, but it'll be mm. very much in and out type footy stuff, and there'll be some very annoying things happening with him. But yep. he's cheap. If it makes if it frees up some cash early on, so you can get your team right, you can't diss it. You can't say a horrible move, but I don't know if he's a guy that you generally want to be ideally getting on to bank on no. points. I wouldn't race to get him in um, just because there's too much going on. You know, uh, it's it's not his position to keep, realistically. Um, I feel like if there was anyone else in there that they could probably plug, they may do. But I just don't see any of those other guys being, you know, that kind of lock position that they want for that spot. You know, they obviously want a ball player. Um, the guy's a pretty talented halfback. So you're just seeing all these halves now all of a sudden playing lock. Um, it's a bit weird, but I suppose it's the way of the new game. So, yeah, they might just keep it running. But, um, yeah, not something I want to be making a change on. Besides that, like, they're the ones that I can kind of say that have fled up this week. You know, you, Duncan, Galvin, Fatape, I wouldn't touch. Pierce, Paul, um, Talau, Plath. You know, there's a fair few, to be honest with you, that have showed up in a week, considering last week you didn't really have much to work with. Um the ones that were already around too, like your Joey Lussex and stuff, like obviously he, he did really well for his price at 313. I think he had a base of about 30. The rest were all attacking stats. So you compare that to what Danny Levi did, um, almost like for like really, when you consider points per uh, points per minute and that kind of thing and how much their dollar's worth because, you know, one's 313, one's 238. Um, but Go yeah, Levi. Guys, his base was dog shit before he got that try, man. I was so worried. I thought, fuck. I didn't have high hopes for him, but I wanted more than 11. Um, he went over, you know. It's going to help. He might make some coin. So, um, Zach Laybutt, I would almost half consider a cashy if he could back it up with another 100K or 100 points this week. Uh, if I could be racing him. 100K would be nice. <laughs> 100K. I think he'd probably make 100K in two 100K. weeks' time. Yeah, probably will pretty quickly. But, um, yeah, that, that's kind of who I sort of made note on. Um, for this week's, you know, influx of cash, a few goodies in there, I think, for the long term. So, yeah, I, I yeah. think Kai Pierce Paul at the moment is the pick of the bunch. If I'm, if you you agree on that one, I think he is the guy yeah. that everyone will be watching this week. I, as I said, I'm not getting on this week, but next week, I feel like I'm about ninety eight percent sure I will have Kai Pierce Paul in my team. Yeah. Uh, Next talking point is the huge scores that are, that have come out in a pretty dog shit round. So they stuck out a lot. Um, the fact that some players were, were able to get over that hundred point mark, which was really crucial and key for the players who did have them in their team. If you were able to have two, three, or four of them, you, you were absolutely laughing. So well done. Um, mm. Unfortunately, I think I had one of them uh, in labour. So I had none. I'll, I'll take that. Not even close. <laughs> um, so huge scores. Um, do you need to sell the house to get on them at the moment? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, I think it's sort of one of those rounds where you can kind of let it go. Um, you do expect some random scores here and there from plays you'd never expected. Um, there was some plays in there that you're obviously guns, you know, you Trell, Val Holmes, Joey Manu, Fanua Blake, um, all went over 100 points. You know, there was only nine plays that did this week too. So... Um, biggest, you know, surprise probably would have been Cartwright, to be honest with you, 116, you know, cleaned up at the top. Um, again, you can let it go. Um, a lot of these guys are priced up quite high as well. So that 108 after a round one, by the time their price changes, it may not make them really change. Might not even really change anything, to be honest with you. Might just be a break even for him by round four. Um, but. Yeah, I, I don't think so, realistically. Um, honestly, the only one that I'd be wanting to race myself in for is Zach Laybot, and it's because I was so keen on him. Um, again, you listen to anyone, they'll probably tell you, just wait two weeks. Wait two weeks, see if you can keep doing it, because he's got a very small sample size, but I'm very, very keen on him. So um, I'd be doing it just because I'd like the guy in the team. But outside of Mine's that... Mine's Val man, Holmes. Val Holmes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he just I just showed a, what he can a do. massive soft spot for Val Holmes in Supercoach. He was really good for me last year. I stuck solid with him and, and it paid dividends for me and he's just started on fire again. And to be fair, I like he was good on the weekend, but for, I think for, I felt like from a Supercoach point of view, he wasn't like killing it. And then he just yeah. turned out to have this 
100 yeah. point game. I was thinking, you're kidding. I know. <laughs> where, where did this come from? So, yeah. Uh, as a draft owner, I loved it. Um, and yeah, he's my guy that I'd be looking at trying to make work um, in my wing center, center wing. Yeah. Yeah. If you can afford to get him in, he's massive. I think at this point, if you really wanted him, you need to sacrifice one of your big guns. Um, I don't know how you would do it. Uh, it's a bit tricky. Uh, honestly, I don't know how you would do it. 750 is huge. Wow. 750 is taken out like your your Ponga. Um, you don't really have a big second. You got Pappenhausen, so it's it's very tricky to go anywhere from him. Hines, Cleary, it, Dylan Brown, maybe Harry Grant. There is some thoughts happening. Um, more so, I think I'll talk about it next week. There was some of my thoughts, but yeah. my thought well, is to get rid of one of these big guns right now before they drop price. Obviously not right now, I mean next week. Let them do what they've got to do for a couple of weeks. So I know I'll keep saying to not sell your guns. They will come good. But in my own mind, I've got to free up some cash, and that's the way I've got to do it. So I've just got to – all I'm going to do literally – after this week, see who's going to have the, the biggest BE and who's going to drop the most price early on. Work that out, and I'll probably get off whoever it is. I don't care if it's Nathan Cleary. I'll get off him. I'll, I'll say that right now to everyone. I'll get off Nathan Cleary. Take the hit for a couple of weeks if it means I get to come onto these like players like Bell Holmes and go from that. Fair enough. Fair I, enough. I'm also tempted <laughs> – to go back on my word, <laughs> Harry Grant, bye bye, and like Reese Robson, he scored quite well. I was really pleased with what I seen from Reese Robson's yeah. score. It's exactly what we thought about and spoken about, and I wish I just did it and left the money in the bank because I would be sitting in a lot better position right now. Yeah. I'm, I do hate upgrading to Harry Grant, even though I said I was prepared for the score against Penrith, and it's fine. This part of me is thinking I should have just kept some of my guns. We were so adamant on not having Harry Grant from the start. Him and Payne Haas are my two not happening, not going to get him. I'm happy with it. And here I was starting Harry Grant at the end. Idiot. Yeah. Yeah, for 750, it was just too much for me. I wouldn't have justified it. I was very I was very keen for Reese Robson. If I had that extra, um, the extra 100K that I ended up finding throughout the week after I'd already locked Brandon Smith in, I probably would have made a change up to Robson. Um, but at the same time, I also had Jacob Little in there for that whole week too. Um, and he scored more than all of them. So he's the other guy I am thinking about. So if this if he goes well again this week, Grant to Little is looking very, very tempting. Well, they got a buy so, coming up too, Melbourne. So you can get off that. Um, the Dragons runs pretty good. Frees up three hundred k. Um, all of a sudden, all you need is. Someone 450 odd to get yourself there. Um, who would that be besides, you know, Labart or May? It's a bit tricky. You don't want to drop either of them. Hey, the boost is coming in. Don't worry. I'll work yeah, out a way and it'll be man. a talking point. That that's yeah, some that's... that is something that I need to do some research on before I entertain the viewers with any thoughts because at the moment I feel like I'm doing them a disservice by tossing out some absolute crap. I need to yep. sit down, notepad it out, <laughs> and do some actual figuring out. So the old pad and pen comes out every time, guys, not just after watching one of those games each week. So um, yep. the last sort of talker point, it, it sort of comes back to what we're talking about already, so it's a nice little segue in, is the, the early trading and the boosts, um, are they a good idea this time of year? Uh, what do we think on that? Because we're already talking about boosts. We're already saying pretty much next week is a certainty to do so. Um, depending on the fires you have to put out, personally, I would say this week is too early to do a boost. I think yep. you've come out with a team for a reason. Now, unless they're injured or suspended for a long period of time, talking a obviously Len you, you, you hold them for now. You, you let them go at least one more week to see what's happening with things. Last week, for a majority of Supercoach players who we thought were going to do well, was just a shit show. Like, And I don't see that happen. Surely, with what history says to us, won't happen again. There will be a huge upgrade with players like the Hines, the Clearies, hopefully mm. the, the, the Grants, um, and then the, the like as well. It has to get better. So I would personally say, before you rage trade, 
think about things. Like I had a few people reach out the last day or two about certain players and stuff. And once I've sort of spoken to them and just said, look, I'm obviously no expert, but if you sit back and just think about things, trust your gut. Supercoach is a huge gut game. We continue to say it. If you've chosen certain players for a reason in the off season and it's all it's taking is one bad game. Like the other thing I'll say to people in Supercoach, most players out there, like in terms of NRL players, will have probably two to three bad games at least a season. Like you're not going to just get one bad score out of him. You're going to get many. And this is just one of them. If it's getting out of the way early, it's probably mm. the best time to get the shit score out of the way. Because as you said, it'll quickly go out of out the door. Won't affect the, the breeze as much and the price um, rises or, or declines. So it's probably the best case for it to happen in round one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm more than happy to boost um, round three, round four, round five, come need it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to sit here and just, you know, hoard my trades. You know, you can't carry them over. Obviously, I didn't finish with any trades at the end of the last season. I wish I had two or so towards the end. But, um, you know, I do want to keep one here and there. But if you can set yourself up, obviously, like, if you're holding trades for the sake of not trading, and you're doing your team in a disservice and they're falling behind for cash generation by points. Um, there's obviously problems in there <clears throat> and you're only sticking with them because you picked them up at the beginning. Um, then you've got to make the changes. You know what I mean? Like the changes need to be made when they do. Um, it's just, yeah, I think boosting in round two is probably a bit too early. I think even with the fires that you have to put out, I don't think there's that many this week to warrant a boost. Um, just in general. Really, if you only had if you had any issues to put out, they're in your front row. Um, I don't think anything else major happened outside of the front row issues this week. So um, I wouldn't be, you know, boosting my team away this round. Um, I am looking at the boost next week, definitely. I won't hide that just because I want to see obviously where the price gen goes here and there. I don't think our cash cows are that cash cowy this year where they're really going to shoot us up three, 400K in a single round each, like last year they were. Um, I think a lot of slow burners this year. So I'll be trading to make money. It'll be a week in, 100K increase if I can get one, trade them. You know what I mean? It's a quick in and out kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm more than happy to boost round three, four, five if I have to. I did that last year and it worked out really well. So I'm happy to do it again, providing you do the right trades. But I do want to hold on to a couple, you know, come later on. So just um, just see, you know, if we got this team list in round two as well, um, keen to see what happens team list round three because we might be looking at a whole different wave of people again thinking, fuck, the last two were pointless. This is the one we wanted. <laughs> yeah. So we'll wait and see. But, um, yeah, yeah, unlucky to anyone that's got a dog shit front row. No one could have predicted the – um the onslaught that you've got to deal with, but you've been forced making two trades, then, you know, so be it. But I, I don't think they're a bad move. Honestly, if you, if you, if your hand has been forced to get Terrell May into your team, then good. That's pretty good. I will, um, I want him and I, I just can't justify trading for him right now. So I'll be sitting from the sidelines, kicking myself thinking, I wish I just had someone shit. I could comfortably get off, but yeah, we'll see. The only, if, um, only thing that sucks for Matt is having to make two early trades from your front row forwards. Which oh, yeah. Ideally, no, you sort of look yeah. at and go, if I can just leave them for the first few weeks and just forget about them, let them get me 45 to 60 in between that sort of range each week, I'm more than happy with that. Just yeah. do what you can, please. Like for me, for instance, like I got, I got Sean Kepi in mind, starting front row as my second one. Yeah. Um, in a normal world, you know what? I probably would be looking. Um, he he did get cover his price, so he he did well for me there. There is definitely some better options out there, but I'm just going to sit with him for now. I, I'm going to yeah. let him go again. Um, the obviously the news with Arrow has helped that, and means for me, I think he'll get a bit more. Hopefully, a couple more minutes in there, a bit more base work. Um, hoping that that 41 goes up to like a 50 this week. Um, if it doesn't and it stays around that 40 mark, there'll obviously a little bit of concern. But again. I know he's not going to decrease cash at the moment. He'll stay around what he's got, so I can play with that. It's not an ideal world, but I don't want to touch my front row forward at the moment. Yeah, I don't want to either. Um, I've got to Tola. He didn't meet his break even last week. He's his break even now is forty eight. Um, obviously, I don't expect him to ever really dip too much below forty or dip too high, climb too high above fifty. 
Um, he was very much just that consistent little chip away player that I was looking at. But, you know, come round three, if it looks like I can do it, and, you know, one's gone up a lot, one's gone down a lot, I can just go to Tola straight to May and bank 5K before they change price. So, like, that's that's my easy out. Um, save Cotter for a rainy day, maybe go up to the, the Fenua Blakes like I really want to. But my only problem is fucking Philly Army for feeder, man. I'm half in two minds to just get Liam Henry and just do a trade there just for the <laughs> sake of it. But because at least he's going to make cash where Fafita is going to be a, he's going to be a loop option for me forever now. Um, not that I hate one. This week's probably the best week to be contemplating going loop because I can put the VC on Hines and just put Fafita in if I have to, but I don't, I don't really want to, you know, I'd rather play a, a legitimate game of super coach than have to loop in round two just to claw my way back into relevancy. You know what I mean? But considering how far back I am, I, I don't think I have much choice to at least to consider it. Um, but yeah, team's looking all right. I, mean, I can't complain too much. It's just a shit first round. We'll come back. It is a shit first round, but as you said, we are lucky. We, we have gotten away with fires and we don't have to put anything out at the moment. So from what we've spoken about and worked out in the offseason, I feel like we do have a, a decent idea about what we're talking about. So we will stick with what we've got for now. Lots of things can quickly change next week. And you know what? I think next week is going to be a huge episode because it's the first price rises and stuff. What I will probably will do with everyone watching and listening, keep an eye on things because probably on Monday I'll put something out on probably our Instagram story and I'll get you guys to send us in your trades and stuff and what you're thinking about. And we can probably put them up on the, and we'll bring the slideshow back. I'll, we'll talk about your trades and stuff, what we think about each one and how we rate it and stuff. And we can might, might open up the, the episode to do something like that and get you guys a bit more mm. involved with our super coach side of things. So I think that'll be pretty cool, especially the first one where it's some big, you got to make some big plays to, to, there's obviously no one's got their team perfectly right. So there's going to be some huge plays, I feel like, next week. So it'll be a good episode to really knuckle down into that. Um, trading side of things and talking about that side of things and the, the technical sort of stuff that comes into it and whether you're and then like put your comments in what your ideal or what your ideas are about this where's your thought pattern are you wanting to free up cash etc are you wanting to to make the big plays etc like that and we'll just we'll talk about it i think that'll be a good way to go for next week's episode yeah no it sounds really good a good fun to see might even you know Always, I'm taking ideas from anyone too. Like, I'll be looking at some trades people make thinking, you know what, fuck, that's actually a pretty, pretty good idea. So definitely keen to hear some um, hear some thoughts around it for sure. We'll be good. If you're if you're out there, you're a Hines and Cleary starting player and you have traded them both this week, let us know, please. I will want to talk to you because I reckon there's someone out there who has gone, you know what, stuff these two. They have yep. spent pretty much two million dollars, and I've got a com- combined what is it, fifty-two points, or uh, sixty-two oh. points out of these two. Makes me um, sick. Makes me sick. Had... Oh, oh it's me. just rough. But yeah, you cash out of them. You grab yourself a Benny Hunt and a Sam Walker, oh. and you're fucking oh. you're laughing all the way. You've you just banked yourself maybe seven eight hundred k. Then you can go from, uh, you know what? Then you could probably go from Gagai, your Jacob Gagai, all the way to Val Holmes in one move. We'll talk about this next week, guys. We're gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna give us a, 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 not really an early mark. This is, this is, I prefer this sort of uh, podcast. Anyway, into this Sunday, it probably is a little bit of an early mark. Um, and we will be ready to rip and tear. Uh, I'll update you all on on the Supercoach Review Show. Um, then we'll obviously, as I said, the trade show. Um, next week will be huge, so get ready to send us in your your teams, what's happening with it, the trades, and we will talk about it then. But good luck this week. Um, the Inch of the Time versus the Cameron Dumpsters once again, week two. Um, I'll put up the updated teams tomorrow or today once you guys do listen to this, let you know how our, how our team and our starting team and our reserves are looking heading into the, the round. Um, might be some late changes that I'll post up, but we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, at the moment, Danny Levi, come on down because I reckon I'll be putting the R on you and, and it's all – he'll be scoring two tries against the Tigers, so bring it on. Jesse, Yep. surely next week uh, – this week is better than last week. It can only – as the famous song said, things can only get better. That's right. They can. It, it cannot get much worse <laughs> than last round. So the lowest score I've ever had in my life. It's all good. Round two. The League of Inches curse. <laughs> 
do it. Enjoy, guys. Hopefully your Love team it. is climbing the ladder this week as well.